Well, good morning and welcome to worship this morning. Uh, for our announcements today, we'd like to uh, announce that our Christmas services this year, uh, once again, we're announcing, uh, will be in the parking lot on December 23rd, 24th, and 25th at 7 p.m. So that will be the same service on uh, each of those evenings. So everyone is invited to, uh, to just stay cozy and safe in your cars. Uh, we can bring uh, hot chocolate, hot tea, or coffee um, to you safely. Uh, we'll have a screen and some hymns, the story of Christ's birth broadcast through your car radios. Uh, we'll even have battery operated tea lights that uh, you can turn on uh, as we sing uh, Silent Night and you'll be able to take those lights with you. Uh, also, we'll be soon, like today, sending out an email and a Facebook post uh, about an opportunity for you to record a greeting or a reading, and include, uh, including video if you would like for our Christmas services. So we'll have uh, more about that, but uh, uh, we hope that as many as possible will join us um, in the uh, parking lot for services, uh, or we'll have a remote option at least uh, one of those times and, and at least record it. Uh, so um, you can join us uh, either in the parking lot or remotely. Uh, and if you're able to at all send in a greeting that will play at the beginning of service or take part in one of the readings, there'll be information about that and an email that'll be going out. Also a reminder that on St. Paul's YouTube channel, and on our Facebook page, we're posting Advent worship service each week uh, by Wednesday. We'll have some readings, some reflections from Pastor Priscilla, uh, and the words and music of Holden Evening Prayer, uh, uh, led by Nathan Watterson and myself, and maybe others. So uh, we invite you to, uh, to share in that. It's a, a pre-recorded service, which is part of how we're able to, uh, to have Nathan leading it with us. Um, so. It will be uh, available by Wednesday evenings, uh, hopefully before, and that you'll be able to use that uh, as a time of, of devotion. We are uh, saddened to announce this week. Uh, oh. Oh. <laughs> Pastor Slow is. Uh, It's my first time running stuff, so there we go. we'll get there. All right, uh, so we're saddened to announce this week uh, the deaths of uh, some folks in our community, uh, Donald Singleton and Pastor Stan Rapp, and so we'll continue to pray for uh, their family and friends. And uh, yes, does anyone else have any other announcements? You can uh, wave or unmute yourself or... that we will uh, begin our worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who comes to wake us from sleep, who leads us into the light of grace. Amen. Amen. Let us prepare the way of the Lord by confessing our sin against God and neighbor. God of all time, we confess that we have not prepared for your coming to dwell among us. We ignore our neighbors in need and fail in the labor of justice and peace. In your mercy, forgive us. Grant us wisdom to welcome your light and to seek the things that will endure until Christ comes again in glory. Comfort, O oh comfort, my people, says your God. In Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven and all things are made new. 
rejoice in this good news. Amen. Wait for the Lord whose day During these weeks of waiting and expecting, where people live in fear of the unknown, we pray for peace. Where people are confused about your will for their lives or for the world, we pray for a clarity. Where people doubt your presence and your word, we pray for trust. Where people are curious and await the future with hopeful anticipation, we pray for wonder. Most of all, when the world longs for you, we pray you help us respond with glad tidings of comfort and joy. O oh God who brings comfort and joy, when our faith wavers and when we question your word, speak to our doubt. Comfort us with your promises and renew our trust in you. Amen. From the halls of power to the fortress tower, not a stone will be left on stone. Let the king be
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Stir up the wills of your faithful people, Lord God, and open our ears to the words of your prophets, that anointed by your spirit, we may testify to your light through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading for today comes from Isaiah uh, chapter 61, verses 1 through 4, 8 through 11. <clears throat> the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. And who see them, shall, all who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, then were we like those who dream. Then our mouth filled with laughter, and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are glad indeed. Restore our fortunes, O Lord like the water courses of an again. Those who sowed with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those, Those who, who go out weeping, carrying the seed, will come again with joy, joy shouldering their sheaves. Second reading comes from Luke chapter 1, verses 41 through 55. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my, of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed, as, blessed is she who believed that there would be a, a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. 
He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. According to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his descendants forever. Well, good morning. Uh, ready for our uh, children's sermon time. Um, so I have here a mirror. And actually, um, I may not even need Pastor Priscilla with a flashlight, uh, but you can see uh, that uh, this mirror I can use to signal to um, to get someone's attention, uh, so you could use uh, a mirror. Sometimes people will uh, will use a mirror if they were to get uh, uh, lost somewhere and uh, trying to to signal someone who's far away. If they could do like I just did and shine that mirror, see that flash. Right across, um, you could notice that flash if it went across you. So, uh, if someone, if there's planes looking for them, or boats far away, or people far away, but they happen to have a mirror, they could try to use it to flash and to, to signal um, where they are. So, um, but a mirror, you don't need any power to run it, um, but it also can't create light on its own. It's not going to be a flashlight at night. Um, to, to show you where to go. But what a mirror can do is it reflects the light. So in our gospel reading that I'm going to read in a minute, uh, we hear about John the Baptist. And John the Baptist uh, came before Jesus. He was uh, actually a, a cousin uh, of Jesus, but he was one who... Uh, um, who announced that Jesus was coming. Uh, he baptized Jesus to show that Jesus was God's chosen one. But just before this, when John was getting a lot of attention, people were coming out to John in the wilderness where he was preaching. And, uh, and people were uh, coming to ask John who he was. Well, the gospel writer of, uh, of the gospel of John, where you hear this story uh, says, there was a man sent from, jo from God whose name was John. He was not the light, but he came as a witness to testify to the light. Uh, that's what we can be. We are not the light. Um, God is the light. Jesus is the light. But we can reflect the light. Uh, and that will get people's attention and it will show people light that doesn't even come from us. The light comes from God. We can simply reflect it and, and shine more light out in other places. Even, uh, well, the newer style flashlight, uh, maybe it doesn't work this way, but the kind of flashlight where you had a bulb that you put in there even has a mirror behind it. And actually a lot of our lights and spotlights, you see a shiny thing in near the bulb. Um, it's got a mirror that helps make it even brighter. As, uh, as we try to... Uh, to see the light that comes from God to us, the good news that comes to us, as much as we can reflect that for others, um, then more people can have light um, as we reflect the light. So John the Baptist said after that, he said, no, I'm not the Messiah, I'm not Elijah, I'm not one of the prophets, I'm just a voice crying out in the wilderness. But he was one who reflected the light of God so that more people could see it. And that's something that we can do as well. Let's pray. God, thank you for the light that you have given, the light of Jesus that comes into the world. Help us to reflect your light so that more people can know your goodness, the goodness of your coming. In Jesus' name, amen.
The Holy Gospel according to John, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, what then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. Then they said to him, who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I'm the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize you with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. He's real. The coffee guy does exist. That's what I heard as uh, three guys crossed the street to come to my table that I had set up at the corner of school, street, and college uh, one Monday uh, a few years back in, uh, in normal at ISU. And during a normal school year at ISU, every Monday morning, I roll out a cart and I set up a table uh, to serve free coffee, tea, and cocoa to anyone. I picked this spot because a lot of sidewalks come together as people are heading towards the quad for classes. <clears throat> it's a simple thing that I try to do, just hospitality for the sake of brightening people's day. And I do it as a way to meet students. It's not a big deal. I do it as part of my campus ministry work. So it's nothing to brag about. It's just something that I thought, you know, could be a, a good way to serve people. But I did find it to be rewarding that when I was trying to do a little something faithful, that when I was trying to plant seeds of goodness, that people came to find me to find out if it really was true. It was one of my more positive experiences of the phrase, your reputation precedes you. And I also found it funny too, the, the coffee guy does exist, made me chuckle. I tell that story because we see in our gospel text today that John the Baptist's reputation precedes him. He's getting attention. People are coming looking for John and they want to know who he is. I love the way that the gospel writer describes this scene. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. Thank you, John the Evangelist. That's a very confusing way of putting that, but <laughs> the point is, John says, I am not the Messiah. It goes on, and they asked him, who are you then, Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. Then they said to him, who are you? Let us have an answer for the people who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. John the Baptist's reputation preceded him. He's trying to do a faithful thing and his work is getting attention. People are noticing but he keeps his awareness of who he is. 
He knows that he is not the Messiah or Elijah. He is not one of the prophets of old, although we would say that he fulfills a prophet's role. But John dials it down from the great uh, grand ideas of who he might be and explains what he thinks his reputation should be. Simply the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord. And that wouldn't be a bad reputation to have. That's not a bad model for us in trying to be faithful in the world because there is a lot of wilderness out there. And there need to be voices crying out. Long before COVID disrupted our relatively comfortable lives, there have been people who have never been comfortable. In fact, there have been people who have always been out in the wilderness, who have always been in the depths of the valleys. To cry out in the wilderness and to prepare the way of the Lord is to tell the truth about the wilderness and the suffering of people who need good news. We hear that kind of truth telling for people who need good news in the reading from Isaiah from today. Saying, he has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and release to the prisoners. We also hear truth telling about the wilderness in the song Mary sang when she heard that she would give birth to the Messiah. This is what Mary believes about God's salvation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. That is the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, proclaiming that it is the work of God for the lowly to be lifted up and the powerful to be brought down. All on the same level make everything one plane. So no one is down in the depths and no one is lording it over them. It's good to have a reputation of being a voice calling out in the wilderness, telling the truth about what needs to change and doing what we can to make things better, anything better for anyone that we can. That's a good thing reflecting the light of God, shining it on people who need good news. But like John the Baptist, we have to know our role to prepare the way, to point to the Messiah, to the one who is coming to bring the final and full transformation. Because if you want to talk about someone whose reputation really precedes them, <clears throat> John says, just wait. <laughs> There's someone coming and already here. The Messiah, God's chosen one. Yes, it's right for us to try to do what's faithful, to tell the truth about what hurts in the world and to try to address the world's pain. That is faithful. It is a way of reflecting the light, but it's reflecting the light. The lesson we can take from John the Baptist is to remember that our hope is not in what we do or because we also fail to do it. But our hope is in the good news that help is actually on the way that God cares and that God comes to the world. John's hope was that the one who was coming was already among the people and he was. John would anoint him and show that Jesus was the Messiah. We trust in the good news that Jesus came to the world, showed God's love through his life, that he spent his time among the lowly and outcast and raised them up. We trust in the good news that Jesus destroyed the power of sin and even of death itself through his cross and through his resurrection. We trust and we live in that hope. And yet we are still voices crying out in the wilderness because there is still suffering and pain and oppression and violence and loss and grief. 
God's kingdom began when Jesus came among us to show it to us. But we can see it has not yet come in its fullness and completeness. And so we cry out, still telling the truth and longing and hoping for the one who will return to make all things new, to bring God's kingdom in fullness and joy. We cry out in the wilderness. We can do that with confident hope that Jesus is the one who comes to us and his reputation precedes him. Amen. Let's confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born in the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. 
He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Now, we remember God's many blessings to us. Now we can share them with the world. Let us pray. Merciful God, we yeah, offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The God of power and might shine your radiance. Come quickly to this weary world. Hear our prayers for everyone in you. God of every living creature, you announce the year of favor for all of creation. Extend your kindness of relief to endangered animals, and plants. Strengthen all the human beings who rely on the rhythms of nature to make their living. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. God of all peoples and nations, you plant us as your oaks of righteousness and ask us to care for one another. Be present with the leaders of every nation as they govern. Give them a spirit of righteousness that your goodness and mercy is revealed through their actions. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. God of the powerful and hopeless, you clothe us with strength when our spirits are weak and weary. Bestow your spirit upon this congregation and empower us to comfort the people who turn to us in times of need. Make your church a place of refuge and healing. We pray this day for Irene, Dixie, Lee, Julia, Marilyn, Don, Tim, Pat, Marcia, Susan, Doug, John, Pam, Heidi, Judy, Murray, Steve and Pat Cronus, Greg, Pastor Lisa, David, Susan, Joanne, Jeff, Pastor Priscilla. We pray for the loved ones of Donna Singleton and Stan Rapp. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of sinners and saints, you offer joy even in the midst of grief. We're grateful for the beloved, imperfect people whose lives testify to your radiant love. Anoint all who mourn with oil of gladness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Draw near to us, O God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now be people of joy. Let joy live in your heart and share the joy of Christ with all. Share, good, share joy by seeing the good in each other. Share joy by remembering good times and hoping for good times to come. Share joy by praying for our world. In this Advent season, we need to see, feel, and share joy. As you go out into the world, we're wonder of God's creations, share joy, peace, and hope with those you meet. 
Amen. Go in peace, prepare the way of the Lord. Thanks be to God.